Welcome back to another video. If you're stopping by the channel for the first time, please consider subscribing to my channel. And while you're at it, smash that like button for me. I really would appreciate it. Also, hit that post notification bell so that you're notified every time I upload a new video. Be careful down in the comment section of the videos. A lot of spam, a lot of scammers. I will never ask you to contact me by WhatsApp or Telegram. I also do not invest money for my subscribers, so please be careful. Don't get yourself scammed. Get down to that description box, click on that Instagram link, Richard Fame Millionaire Mentor. Give me a follow, guys. I had to create a new Instagram page, and uh, you guys have been wonderful over these last several days by getting yourself over to Instagram and giving me a follow. Um, I'm gonna continue to ask you guys that every day because I'm trying to get this Instagram page built back up to the size of my last Instagram page, Richard Fane 28, that was shut down. So in every live stream, in the beginning, have some patience with me. I got a couple things I need to get through before we get into the meat and potatoes. And one of those things is getting down to the description box, clicking on that Instagram link and giving me a follow on Instagram at Richard Fane Millionaire Mentor. Uh, right now we got a couple thousand followers trying to get that up to 10,000 followers over the next 30 days. I think we can do that seeing that we got almost 700,000 people on the YouTube channel. I figure I could get 10,000 of you guys to uh, give me a follow on Instagram so we can kind of get the page going and get the algorithm going so we can kind of get this content out and help more people. So if you rock with me, do me a big favor, get over to Instagram, give me a follow, and then send me a DM just to say hello and then let me know you're rocking with me. I really would appreciate that, guys, if you do that. Remember, we had the old Instagram page, Richard Fane 28 It had 90,000 followers. Instagram shut that one down. So I had to create a new one, which is Richard Fane Millionaire Mentor. And I'm okay with that. I don't, I don't harbor any ill will towards Instagram. Hey, man, that's how this social media thing is. So we can rebuild a new Instagram page. Now, let's start with 10,000 people, and then we'll keep, keep ratcheting it up from there. So I appreciate you if you'll get down there in the description box, click on the Instagram link, give me a follow, send me a DM, and say hello. If you want 10, 10, 10 guys, fractional shares of the Magnificent Seven, I'm talking about seven of the largest companies in the world are in the Magnificent Seven. If you want 10 fractional shares for free, Moomoo is going to give you 10 fractional shares of the Magnificent Seven for just trying out their brokerage account and their brokerage app. That link is down in the description box of this video. Go click on that Moomoo link. Open up the Moomoo account. Put $100 in it. They're going to give you 10 free fractional shares of the Magnificent Seven. You're talking about Apple. Microsoft, Meta, Amazon, Alphabet, NVIDIA, and Tesla. Nowhere else in the brokerage app game will somebody give you 10 fractional shares of the Magnificent Seven. Nowhere else, guys, other than Moomoo. That's a special offer they are giving you through me. So if you go down and click on my link in the description box, first link, Go ahead and click on that Moomoo link and go get those 10 free fractional shares of the Magnificent Seven. And then here's the next step. You continue to put money in that brokerage app and you continue to buy fractional shares of the Magnificent Seven for the next 10 years. We're going to discuss what's happening right now as it relates to assets. We're going to have a full hour or so talking about that. But here's how you set yourself up to do well, no matter what happens over these next couple of years, right? Here's how you set yourself up over a long period of time to build wealth, doing exactly what I'm recommending you consider, which is getting down in the description box, clicking on that Moomoo link, and getting yourself 10 fractional shares of the Magnificent Seven. You're talking about three, the top three companies in the world are in the Magnificent Seven, guys. And the top six companies in the world are in the Magnificent Seven. 
right? You're talking about Microsoft number one, Apple number two, NVIDIA number three. Those are the three most valued companies in the world, and you're going to get fractional shares of them. How in the world are you going to miss that? It, it, not and again, you're talking about six of the top seven companies in the world are in the Magnificent Seven, right? You got Microsoft number one, you got Apple number two, you got NVIDIA number three, you have Amazon number five, you got, no, Alphabet's number five, I believe, Amazon's number six, and then you got Meta, who's number seven. You're talking about six of the top seven companies in the world you're gonna get fractional shares of. And then you get Tesla, they're number 15 in the world, leader in the EV space. Le Listen guys, all big boy blue chip. So if you wanna start building wealth, people keep asking me, Richard, what do I do to build wealth? What do I need to invest in? Guys, you gotta plug into the, you, you gotta plug in every day. I tell you every day what I recommend you consider to invest in. I, every day I tell you this. Every single day, 365 days a year, there ain't a video go by at least the live stream, not my little short videos. Sometimes we don't talk the short videos. We have different things. But on these live streams, every single day I do, I tell you exactly what I recommend you consider investing in. Now, I can't tell you what to invest in because I'm not your financial advisor. But I can give you a recommendation based on what I'm doing. It's OK for me to do that. I tell you guys all the time, I'm no financial advisor. I'm no expert in the stock market. I'm no expert in any of this stuff. I'm just a guy who's done it on his own for 25 years, and I'm giving you my opinion. If you want to know how to build wealth, I'm giving it to you. You just got to pay attention and do it. A lot of people, though, they hear me telling them, but they want to go off and do whatever they want to do, and that's fine. That's fine. You ain't got to do what I'm at. Hey, don't do what I'm recommending you do. I'm just telling you guys, how can you go wrong buying the Magnificent Seven? I don't care if you did. Listen. If you want to buy individual stocks and 20% of my money that I spend or, or invest in the stock market is in individual stocks, 20% of my money, I buy the Magnificent Seven. Why would I buy anything else? You're talking about the top, you're talking about seven of the top 15 companies in the world are in the Magnificent Seven. Why would I buy anything else? I, I'm just, for me, it's not rocket science. You're talking about Microsoft. You're talking about Apple. You're talking about NVIDIA, Amazon, Alphabet, Meta, and Tesla. Why would, I mean, come on guys. Why wouldn't I buy these people? Why wouldn't I, buy, why wouldn't I become an owner of these companies? They're the best of the best. So all I'm telling you, get down to the description box, click on that Moomoo link, introduce yourself to the Magnificent Seven for free. Put $100 in your Moomoo account and introduce yourself to the seven of the greatest companies in the world. That's all I can tell you. That's my opinion. You may not believe that. You may go a different direction and that's okay. But in my opinion, there's seven of the top companies in the world and they have a proven track record of doing what? Multiplying money. That's all that matters to me. They got a proven track record of multiplying money. So get down in that description box, click on that Moo Moo link and do yourself a favor. Give yourself a free gift. Give yourself a free gift of being becoming a shareholder of the top seven companies in the world. You're a shareholder now. You're an owner. Got to get off the sideline at some point, guys, and put yourself in the game. You got to get off the sideline and put yourself in the game if you're going to build wealth. What a great gift to yourself. 10 fractional shares of the Magnificent Seven. Click on that link. First link in the description box if you want to take advantage of that offer. Let's move on to the website and then we're going to get into the meat and potatoes. The website launched on April 15th. My website, Richard Fain Millionaire Mentor website, launched on April 15th and it's been bananas. I've had so many of you guys come over to the website check out the digital products, grab you some digital products. And then I've had so many of you guys make the next step, which is joining the membership club. 
And again, I'm very active in the membership club. I sent out daily uh, thoughts of the day every morning. Ask anybody. Well, you probably won't know who's in the membership club if you're not there. But I sent out nice little things every single morning to the club just to let them know, hey, I'm thinking about you. And, and, and here's 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 some positivity to get your day started, because, see, I'm a big believer in positivity, guys. I'm a big believer in positivity over negativity. See, I believe positive attracts positive. I believe negative attracts negative. So every morning, my job is to send out something positive to my club members. So I do that every morning and I'm going to do that 365 days a year. So every morning you wake up, you look at that phone or you look at whatever you look at. Social media wise, and if you're a club member, you're going to see something from me. Good old Richard Fain, a positive message that hopefully puts you on the right pathway, because see, in your filter system, whatever you allow in your filter system comes out. So if I allow positivity in my filter system, when I start my day, my filter system is going to look to confirm those positive thoughts. So what it does is it seeks out evidence of other positive things. You may call it law of attraction. I call it God. See, I, I, I call it I call it free will which God, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ gives me that free will. You can call it law of attraction, but I call it free will. See, I think I call it positive free will. I, I call it positive choices. So, so I, I accept positive choices, right? I accept that in my life. Therefore, when I go out in the world, I attract other people who accept positive choices, who accept free will, right? So all I'm telling you is that sets the stage for you to get out there and build wealth, man. It sets the stage for you to succeed that day. So I'm gonna do that every day for the club members. Not only that, they're gonna have exclusive content, plus we're gonna have 90 minute live streams every single week, just myself and the club members. And we're gonna take deep dives into whatever topics from a financial standpoint that they want to talk about, right? Because I'm going to frequently ask them before every live stream, what do you guys want to cover to, in, in the live stream this week? Well, Richard, we want to cover side hustles. Well, Richard, we want to cover um, the stock market. Well, Richard, we want to cover real estate. Well, we want to talk about whatever they want to talk about, we're going to talk about. This is the only venue I will ask you guys what you want me to talk about. I don't do that on YouTube. Y'all know that. I talk about what I believe is the best thing for me to talk about for the wider audience. But in the club, in the membership club, it's going to be up to them 90 percent of the time. Plus, we're going to be bringing on guests. I don't do that on the YouTube channel and don't plan on doing it. But we're going to do it in the club. So, hey, it, listen here, man. Get over to the website. Second link down in the description box. Get over to the website. Check out the digital products. Again, the digital products were handpicked by me. People are rocking with them. People are purchasing them every day. So, oh, golly, I don't want to purchase it. Okay, then, then stay where you're at. It's that simple, guys. It's that simple, guys. I, it, this thing is not rocket science. If you don't want to invest in yourself, guess what? Ain't nobody else going to invest in you. I, I, I don't know why y'all making this like this is some trigonometry test. <laughs> this is some algebra, honors algebra test. No, it's pretty simple. You don't invest in yourself. You're not going to build wealth. It's that, it's that simple. If you want to stay where you're at, stay there. My website, the, the, the products on that, they're going to do what they do. I'm going to make sure of that. See, I'm a guy that knows how to get things done, guys, especially in the financial space. I'm not tooting my own horn, but I, I know what I'm doing. So, so who, whoever don't want to invest in themselves, don't. It's 4.5 billion people have access to the Internet. 4.5 billion. We only got about 8 billion people in this world. I got access potentially to 4.5 billion people. I know how to get at them. So, so it, it, it's, not a, it, it's not a, well, guys, if you don't do it, I'm, it's, it's going to fail. No, if you don't want to do it, don't. There's somebody else out there that will. 
See, there's, there's people out there that understand investing in themselves is the best investment they can ever make. See, there's people out there that understand that. Every day, people are starting to convert the way they think in their filter system to a positive way of thinking. They reprogram themselves to think, well, hey, really the best investment I can make ever in life is an investment in me. So you not investing in yourself ain't hurt nobody but you. But yet and still, you'll take $50, $60, $100, $150, $200 and chase some 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 personality on 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 social media selling garbage to you. You'll buy all that garbage so you can brag and say, "Oh yeah, I bought uh, I bought Ciroc from somebody. I bought this. I bought their liquor. I bought their this. I bought their T-shirt. I bought their hat." You'll go spend all that money to make somebody else rich, but you won't spend thirty five, forty dollars to make yourself rich. <laughs> I'm telling you guys, we got to get out of this mind frame and get in the mind frame in the number one investment I can make right now is in me. See, I made that investment in me at 26 years old. I made that investment. I bought a book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. The best investment in myself I've ever made. It has paid off 10,000 fold. I purchased that. I made that investment, I read that book, and it radically changed the way I think about finances. And I went on to do the things that I've done building my wealth. What I'm telling you guys is if you won't make a, a financial investment in yourself, nobody else will. Get over to the website, check out the digital products, think about the membership club, get yourself immersed. I'm, I'm talking about submerge yourself in this financial movement. And then take this information and execute. Well, Richard, I don't know what to invest in. I tell you every single day in these live streams what to invest in. Let me, let me back up. I tell you every day in these live streams what I recommend you consider investing in. The problem is 99% of y'all don't watch the videos. That's the problem. But then I get the emails, hey, what do I invest in? I know immediately you don't watch any of the videos because if you watched any of the videos, that's all I talk about every day is what I recommend you invest in. See, I know who's watching the videos and who's not, who's ready to get this thing done. Guys, you got to immerse yourself into the information and then you got to take that information and execute on it. I give you the information every single day on this channel. The problem is 99% of us don't watch the channel. 99% of us don't, um, they don't do anything. I'm not here. I'm not here to be, I'm not here to paint a, a beautiful picture of the world for you. That's not why I'm here. There is other channels that'll do that for you. I'm here to tell you what's happening in the real world. And, and, and you can make all the excuses you want, guys. Make all the excuses you want. Call it what you want. It's the truth. And the people that really rock with me know it's the truth. I have your best interest at heart to build wealth, to help you build wealth. But it's not my job to sit here and um, paint this, this picture of this beautiful, beautiful thing that's going to happen to you. All you got to do is just be there and be patient and wait for it. Just keep waiting. It'll happen. Don't worry about it. You ain't, hey, I get it if you're tired and you don't want to, you don't want to, you know, create that side hustle. I, I know. I, I get it. You don't have to. It'll be okay. It'll be okay. Don't worry about it. See, that's not, that's not what I'm going to do, guys. I'm going to tell you the truth every day. Now, if you don't like the truth, then don't watch my channel. There you go. It's that, it's that, it's that it's simple. If you don't want to hear the truth, if you don't want to hear my version of the truth, if you don't want to hear my opinion, don't watch the channel. Right? So, so all I'm telling you is, hey, it's up to you if you want to get something done in your life. It's up to you. The information is here. If you want the information, take it and then execute on the information. That's it, guys. That's it. Cut and dry. Well, let's move on. Let's dive into what's going on right now. Well, we know interest rates are going to be higher for longer. We also know that there's a chance if inflation continues to be sticky and stubborn, there's a chance that the Federal Reserve could increase short-term interest rates. I'm not saying that they will increase it, 
But there is an opportunity, guys, for them to increase short term interest rates if inflation continues to be persistent at three percent or higher. There's a chance that they can do that. Even if they don't increase interest rates, where interest rates are today are at all time highs. Over the last, I don't know, 30 or 40 years, right? Over the last 30 years or so, this is the highest interest rates have been from a Fed fund standpoint, five and a half percent. And you guys got to understand the five and a half percent Fed funds rate is not what you borrow money at. That's, the, that's the, the Fed's rate for banks. Then when banks borrow that money, guess what they turn around and do? Put another spread on top of it, which is called the prime rate. So, so, the, so banks will borrow the money at five and a half percent, and then they turn around and lend it to you based on the prime rate, which is three percent higher than the Fed funds rate. So that's eight and a half percent. So when you look at your credit card statements and they say prime plus 12 Prime plus 11, prime plus 10. That's what they're talking about. The baseline rate is prime, which is eight and a half percent. And then most credit cards throw on another eight, nine, 10 percent on top of that. That's how you arrive at your 22 percent average interest rate for credit card balances right now. That's how they come up with that rate. They use the prime rate plus whatever their spread is. And guess what? Depending upon where they're at. I guess all states have some type of statute on what they can charge. Most banks are going to be in that 20 to 22 percent rate right now for credit cards with balances. And I just told you how they come up with the rate. So what I'm telling you guys is, is these rates at the Fed funds rate. Well, five and a half percent ain't that high, but you ain't borrowing the money at five and a half percent. That's the problem. That's not your rate. The banks borrow it at five and a half. You don't. You borrow it going to be at prime rate or higher. Right. So if I go out and I'm a and I'm a I'm a I'm a, a, a prime credit candidate. And all that means is my credit score is what? Let's say 740 or higher. Let's say my credit score is 740 or higher and I go out to buy a car. They consider me a prime borrowing candidate. So that means I get supposedly the best rate. Even as a prime borrowing candidate right now, guys, you're going to be at seven and a half, eight percent on car loans, period. That's brand new cars with the very best credit. You're at seven and a half, eight percent all day long. If you've had a little financial bump in the road and you're considered subprime where your little credit score went down and you're not a prime candidate, you're a subprime candidate. And all that means is you pre you present more risk of not paying them their money back. You've demonstrated in the past you won't pay people back. You've demonstrated in the past that you will just let the car go back. You've demonstrated in the past that you won't pay your credit card debt. You've demonstrated in the past you just not your unwillingness or inability to repay debt. They classify you as a subprime borrower. Your rate right now is between 14 and 21 percent on car loans. Just saying. That's where it's at. That's the real world we live in, guys. None of this make-believe, uh, la, la, la land stuff. This is the real world. This is, not, this is not gloom and doom. This is the real world we live in. I don't know why in America we, we do not want to face the fact that there's a real world out here. We're in this bubble that we want to believe nothing bad happens. There's nothing going to... For some reason, we, we, we want to be continuously fed things that are not true to make us feel better. The truth of the matter is rates are high. And, and, and something at some point when these rates continue to stay as high as they are, something is going to break. And that's what we're going to talk about. Something is going to break. Let's start off right here with the banks. Remember, that's my title, right? Because y'all said, you know, some of y'all say I'm clickbaiting you, which I'm not. The title is exactly what we're going to talk about. Here's the deal. Here's banks. Here's how banks could potentially go into a recession. Here we go. Here's the headline. U.S. regional banks seen booking more commercial property losses. Loan sales. Okay. What do you mean, Richard? Well, we're going to get into it. You do know what losses mean, right? That means people are starting to not pay them. 
People are starting not to pay their loans. That's what that means. That means they're starting to book losses. That means people can't pay them or they're just unwilling to pay them. That's what that means. Oh, golly, but we got this great economy. How can banks be? I keep telling y'all guys, we got two economies. You got the boom economy where the 1% roll, and then you got the bust economy where the 99% roll. See, the 99%, we're, we're, we're starting to fall into some trouble here. Let's read on. April 17th, U.S. regional banks are expected to set aside more money to cover potential commercial real estate losses and sell more property loans as the sector remains under pressure a year after the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank. I didn't make this up. This is, this is, this is what's happening, guys, in the real world. Now, if you're in some make-believe world over here that you created for yourself and you don't know, this, the, this is what's happening in the real world, right? The real world. Most multifamily loans are made by regional banks. So when New York Community Bank posted surprise fourth quarter losses, it intensified fears about the industry's exposure to commercial real estate. Well, Richard, what has commercial real estate loans got to do with us? It ain't got nothing to do with me. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a consumer. I'm a regular person. Yeah, it does, guys, because here's the deal. Here's the deal. Here's how it has to do with you and me. 95% of the businesses in this country are small businesses. Who do you think the tenants are for these commercial real estate properties? Small business owners. Small business owners. Not, not Apple. <laughs> not Tesla. You know, not Microsoft. <laughs> We're not talking about them. We're talking about the real small businesses in this country that make up 95% of the businesses. That's who they're talking about. And see, these, these, these small businesses are the tenants for these commercial real estate landlords. They're the tenants. So what happens, though? If small businesses can't borrow money, guys, because rates are too high, they cannot borrow money. If small businesses can't borrow money to invest in their growth, what happens to small businesses? They shut down. They close. And if 95% of businesses in this country are small businesses, who do you think 95% of their tenants are in these commercial buildings? Small businesses. And if these small businesses can't borrow money because interest rates are too high, they can't invest in growth. That means they got to lay off people. That's how it affects you and me. They got to lay off people. And then they got to ultimately close their doors. Or they have to reduce expenses. So what happens is they go to the landlord and say, hey, Mr. or Mrs. Landlord, I, I, I no longer can afford your $5,000 a month rent to, to, to lease this building. I'm just going to run my business out of my house. I don't need, I don't need the $5,000 a, a month overhead anymore. I got to go just reduce expenses and just run my business out of my house. And then what happens to this landlord? He, he loses rental income. When the landlord loses rental income, that impacts his ability to pay his loan to the bank or her loan to the bank. That's what happens, guys. So, so, if, so if I'm a small business owner, I can't borrow money to invest in my growth so that I can make more revenue, grow my business. If I can't invest money in that business because I don't have any capital, I don't have enough capital to continue investing in the business because most small businesses in America are undercapitalized. All that means is they don't have reserve cash, a bunch of reserve cash to kind of continue. They have to go borrow money. Whether they do it through factoring, whether they do it through banks, whether they do it through secondary lenders, whether they do it through taking on investment from private investors, they have to borrow money in most cases to grow and generate more revenue. When they can't do that, then they have to cut expenses. One of the biggest expenses they have is typically whatever they're renting, the brick and mortar space that they're renting to run the business out of. So if I'm a trade person, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I have an electrical company, I got a plumbing company, I, whatever it is, I can run that business out of my home. 
I can cut that $5,000 a month I'm paying to that landlord. And when I do that, that landlord now has lost revenue from that property. The thing is, the landlord typically will have a loan from a bank, a regional bank, a small bank for that building. Right. So if so, if the rental income goes down, that impacts that real estate landlord's ability to pay his loan or her loan. Right. So most multifamily, most multifamily loans are made by regional banks. So when New York Community Bank. Surprise fourth quarter losses intensified fears about the industry exposure to commercial real estate. Multifamily properties with more than five units are a major concern, especially since the bank had booked losses on its real estate portfolio. Scrutiny of regional banks has increased after Silicon Valley Bank's collapse prompted a high borrowing cost that exceeded its income from low rate loans following the Federal Reserve's aggressive rate hikes since March. So one of the banks that failed, which was Silicon Valley Bank, high borrowing costs prompted by high borrowing costs that exceeded its income, right? So the ability to borrow money exceeded, or, or the cost associated with borrowing money exceeded the income that they were making. When that happens, you're upside down, right? You have more expense than you have revenue. You're upside down. You're operating in the red. And that's what happened to Silicon Bank. And they're fearing this could happen to more banks. Many banks have unrealized losses on security portfolios, including mortgage backed paper. A slew of regional banks report first quarter earnings starting April 16th, which was Tuesday. And this article came out Wednesday of this week. I expect to see more of a reserve buildup. Right. That's what one of these analysts said. Office loans remain the biggest pain. Office loans. Right. Office loans where. You go. Lease a 3000 square foot office space, you put your people in there, start operating your business. All of a sudden you hit a cash crunch. You need to borrow money in order to keep this business going. You go to the bank and they say, well, Richard, we like you. You've been a great customer, but here's the deal. Our borrowing costs have went up, so we got to charge you more money for to, to lend you money. Well, what do you mean, Mr. Banker, Mrs. Banker? I, I can't get the 4% you gave me the last time. No, Richard, we can't give you the 4%. Because, see, we got to borrow the money from the Fed at 5.5%. So that means now we got to charge you 8.5%. So we got to charge you double what we used to charge you. Well, golly, Mr. Banker, I, I can't afford to pay you eight and a half percent for that loan. Well, sorry, Richard, we love you, but can't we, we can't give it to you at four percent anymore because our borrowing costs are higher than four percent. So we can't borrow the money from the Fed or another bank at five and a half and we lend it to you at four. We can't do that. So what do I do? I say to myself, well, golly, man, I'm in a tight crunch here. I can't borrow money that makes sense. OK, guess what, guys? I got to lay some of y'all off. And better yet, I, I, I got to close the whole shop. I got to run this thing out of my house. I can take two of y'all with me. Some of y'all can work remote, but everything else got to go. That's what's happening, guys. That's what's happening in the commercial real estate market, especially with office, right? Office. Office loans remain the biggest pain points, not multifamily, office and retail, right? The biggest pain points for banks, but also expect stress in the multifamily sector, especially construction loans. So now you got these construction loans out there, people midway through building these multifamily apartment buildings or whatever. That's even a tight crunch. It's a tight crunch, man. It's a tight crunch all the way around in the commercial real estate arena, right? Commercial real estate arena. Office loans have been hit as many employees still work from home after the pandemic, leaving vacancies that make it tougher for building owners to repay their mortgages. All they're telling you there is they have high, high, high vacancy, high vacancy. And that does what? 
cut down on the cash flow. See, when you're 100% occupied and everybody's paying you, cash flow is great. But when you're 75% occupied or 60% occupied, that means 40% of your space, no one's paying. But your loan you have to the bank is based on you having 100% of the space leased. But now you only got 75, 60 to 75 leased. So now you're on the water on the loan. You, you can't make the loan payment. Because the loan payment is based on you having 100% occupancy, maybe 80% occupancy. But you just slid all the way down to 60% occupancy, 7% occupancy. And that's the problem with landlords are starting to have. They don't have enough cash flow to repay these loans. Other loans have been hit as employees still work from home for the pandemic. In cities like New York, San Francisco, Right before the pandemic, severely limited rent hikes on regulated apartments based on record low interest rates and inflation at the time. Non-performing CRE, which is commercial real estate loans as a percentage of U.S. banks portfolios, doubled to 0.81% by the end of 23 from 0.4%. So basically what they're saying is that non the non-performing list, that's basically people just not paying you. It's double. So it went from zero point, it went from 0.4% to 0.81%. So it doubled, right? A year from a year earlier. The International Monetary Fund said it is seen in its semi-annual global financial stability report, banks have continued to increase provisions for bad loans. And all they mean by increased provisions is banks are starting to take money aside, set it aside, anticipating more people not paying them. So they're starting to take profits, set those profits aside, and just wait for people to default on their loans. And then they, they'll take that money out of those profits that they set aside and try to make themselves whole, right? The problem is at some point, you run out of the ability to have loan loss reserves if you're a regional bank or a small. Now, the big boy banks don't have no problem, but these regional and small banks, they're going to run out of money some, at some point, right? They're going to run out of money at some point. Several analysts and investors are predicting higher reserves. Morgan Stanley forecast. 10 to 20 percent. It, it's just getting crazy, right? It's getting crazy. Getting crazy. So Morgan Stanley forecast 10 to 20 percent basis points increase in CRE reserve ra ratios for regional banks this year. Aggregate provisions are 20 percent or above, they said. So basically, banks are starting, these regional banks are starting to set aside more and more reserves, expecting that there are going to be more defaults. Right? So that's what you got, man. It's, it's, it's not that, it's not good news. It's not good news for the banking sector. It's not that good. It's not good news. CRE holdings are significant across the U.S. banking industry, comprising 13% of large banks' balance sheets and 44% of regional banks' balance sheet. So the big boy banks have about 13% of their loan portfolio in the CRE space. It's still a lot, but not as much as regional banks. Their 44% of their balance sheet, guys, is these types of loans. Think about it. If, if, if these things go bad, these regional banks, these small banks are going to get hit, hit really, really hard. The big boy banks will survive. These little ones, they're not going to survive, man. Some of them are not going to survive. Some of them are not going to survive. So <laughs> be careful where you got your money right now. Make sure, make sure you know exactly what the strength of your bank is. Make sure you go in and ask questions. Ask these people, you know, hey, how are you guys looking? Are there any problems? And again, they're probably not going to tell you that. But what you got to do is go out and do a little bit of research. Pull up the $1 trillion research lab and type them in. Do some research. I and mean, if they will share, a lot of these smaller banks that are private banks, 
they don't really share their financial statements. Some of them do. Some of them do. I know like credit unions, they will share their financial statements. And then what you want to do is you want to go look at their balance sheet and you want to look at that balance sheet and see how many loans they have and, and which ones are performing, right? You want to make sure they're not in a position where they got a bunch of loans. They already told you 44% of, of regional and small banks, that's where they make all their money is on these loans. 44% of their balance sheet when it comes to uh, assets are these loans. They're considered assets because they generate income for the bank. The, the money that you put in the bank is considered a liability because it, that doesn't belong to the bank. That belongs to you. But the bank uses your money to make loans. That's how you come in this whole equation. That's how do you think they're making these loans? They're using your deposits. These banks take your deposits and they lend them out to people for loans. Right. I tell you what, it's, 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 the, it's the biggest scam in, 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 in the world, in, in, in American history. These banks, they can take your money that don't belong to them. It belongs to you. They can take your money and lend it out. And it's legal. Totally legal. And if they fail, guess who guess who backstops this whole thing? If they fail, you and me as taxpayers. So let me get this straight. You take my money, I take my money, put it in your bank. You take my money, put it in whatever you want to put it in. Without, I, I don't get to vote on that. You just, I, I've already signed the, the, the thing that says you can do it. You take my money, you put it in something risky. That investment fails. You fail. And then I bail me out through my, tax, my taxpayer dollars. <laughs> that's, how, that's how it work. That's how it work. I'm telling you. If you don't believe me, go look it up. That's how it works. I put my money in the bank. They take it, put it in something. If that investment fails, they fail. FDIC steps in. FDIC, you know, gives you money back if it's under $250,000, but taxpayers pay for all of that. You and me pay for all of that. What do you think the FDIC gets the money from? Now, I know banks do pay into that. They pay into that fund, but they don't they don't pay off. They, they don't make us all the way whole. We pay in some as well as taxpayers. Banks do pay a percentage. They pay into that fund. Don't get me wrong. I know they do, but not 100 percent of it is just banks that pay into it. Some of it is taxpayers dollars, in my opinion. That's my opinion. Well, let's move on. We've talked about banks and how the banking industry could roll into a recession. We talked about that. And again, the solution is what? Before you put your money in one of these banks, make sure it's a bank that's clean. That's the solution. That's the whole reason I'm telling you this. Before you put your money into one of these banks, it's on you to do your due diligence. When you walk in there, they're not going to be on some megaphone and says, hey, we got 44% of our loans that are about to go bad. They're not going to tell you that. They don't tell you nothing. One day you're going to go there and the door going to be locked. They're not going to tell you something's wrong with them, guys. They don't, they're not going to do that. So it's, you, it's on you to do your due diligence and to make sure that you're putting your money in something that's in a bank that's solid. A lot of you guys out here chasing money market rates and you're doing all these little online banks. You ain't never seen nobody. You're never, no brick and mortar. You're doing all these little online banks. I'm telling you guys, you better know where you're putting your money at chasing this three, four, five percent money market rates with these online banks. Ain't nobody never heard of. You better be figuring out where they're putting your money at. They're giving you three, four, five percent for a reason. <laughs> they're not giving it to you because they're, oh, they just, oh, golly, he's a nice guy. Let's give him five percent. No, 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 no. They're taking that money from you that they're paying you three, four, five percent on. They're taking that money and they're leveraging it somewhere else to make twice, three times more than what they're paying you. That's how they make money, guys. You do understand that, right? They take your money that they're giving you three or four percent interest rate on. They take that money and they leverage it into all kind of crap that you don't even know about. You better know who you're putting your, where you're putting your money, guys. That's all I'm telling you. Me personally, got to go with too big to fail. That's where I put mine at. I'm going to put mine with too big to fail. I ain't going to have none of mine with no little pipsqueak bank. All too big to fail. That's why I'm going to have mine because I know the United States government is not going to let Wells Fargo fail. 
They ain't going to let Bank of America fail. They ain't going to let J.P. Morgan Chase fail. I promise you that. I promise you they're not going to let them fail. Because if they let them guys fail, guess what? The whole U.S. financial system is going to fail. <laughs> so that's where I put my money. You put your money where you want to, but be careful. Well, let's jump into real estate. Because I mentioned real estate in the title. How can real estate be potentially going into a recession? Oh, how can real estate? I mean, we're at all-time high on prices, Richard. What are you talking about? This guy is crazy. He's just saying something. Okay, let's read on. Here's the headline. The economy might be booming, but housing is in a recession. The economy might be booming, but housing is in a recession. Top real estate CEO says he's never seen anything like it in 20 years. Let's read on. Let's see what he got to say. Chief executive of Redfin, a self described technology powered real estate company, a modern way to buy and sell homes. He's been at the helm for almost two decades and doesn't seem to have lost his zeal. Not during the great financial crisis, not now. He calls himself the luckiest person in the world. It can't be easy. Redfin stock reached a high of more than 95 per share during the pandemic and its corresponding housing boom. See, that's what spurred this whole thing, guys, right? This real estate, this pandemic real estate boom started all this stuff with real estate, right? Before the pandemic, real estate was just plugging right along, decent interest rates, you know, not one going up crazy in value, maybe three, four percent a year, like normal, and then all of a sudden the pandemic hits and accelerates this whole thing. That's basically what they're saying. Right. So here's the thing. This red fan outfit. Uh, this is what their CEO believes happening. So the pandemic and its corresponding housing boom. So that's that pandemic real estate boom. But it's trended downward ever since. They're talking about their their stock. Right. Landing at around five dollars and 50 cents. So Redfin goes from ninety five dollars per share during the pandemic. Now they're all the way down to five dollars and 50 cents. Here's the point. This is a real estate company. Albeit a, a real estate technology company. But this is just one of the industries, guys, within the real estate market that are suffering. I don't care if prices are high on houses. You talk, I'm talking about the industry itself. Companies like Redfin and others, real estate agents, mortgage brokers, title companies, real estate attorneys, the whole industry is in a recession. Let's keep reading. It's been a tough ride. Revenue dropped last year and agents were cut. See, everybody ain't living up here in this, 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 this boom economy, guys. A lot of people down here in this recession economy or, or this cesspool economy, as uh, former President Trump likes to call it, this cesspool economy. Everybody not up here. This company went from $95 a share four years ago to $5.50. Everybody not up here, guys. Every industry is not doing well. Housing market is one of them, and companies like this are suffering. It's been a tough ride. Revenue dropped last year, and agents were cut. It goes beyond Redfin. I just told you that, right? All of the housing world suffered as the Federal Reserve raised interest rates. Losing 40% of our agents is a tragedy. I feel personally responsible for it. I was the one who signed their offer letters in spirit, if not in fact. And I failed to grow the business to the extent that we could keep them all busy. It's just hard when the number of homes sold in the United States drops from 6 million to 4 million. 2 million homes sold drop. And I know this guy has fallen on the sword, but it ain't all his fault. I don't care who you were. You could have been Warren Buffett at the helm. Didn't matter. 
I don't care who was at the helm. It didn't matter. When you go from selling six million homes a year down to four, that's a lot of revenue lost. That's a lot of revenue lost. A lot of it. Last year, existing home sales fell to their lowest point in almost 30 years. Well, we got this great economy, though. Our economy is booming. It's so great. Real estate prices are so high. But yet and still, the real people behind the real estate market, this is what they're saying. Right. Everybody ain't the 1% can go in and just pay cash. Everybody ain't the 1%, man. Most of us are 99 percenters and we can't pay cash. We got to go get a loan. Problem is the loans are seven and a half, almost 8% to get. So guess what? We can't buy. Mortgage payment too high. So we got to sit on the sideline and rent or stay in the home that we're currently in. And that's what's hurting the real estate market. That's why the real estate market is in a recession. Not because of homes are high priced. It's because there's no activity. There's not enough activity. So people can make a living. This guy's telling you right here, last year, existing home sales fell to their lowest point in 30 years. The housing market froze. And it's only just begun to thaw. Mortgage rates were the highest they've been in more than 20 years. And they've come down since, but are still high compared to with those of the pandemic. In the past week or so, mortgage rates surged again. And you know why they're surging? Because of interest rates, the Fed funds rate. Oh, the Fed funds rate ain't got nothing to do with it. Yes, it does. The Fed funds rate, the Fed funds rate directly affects the 10-year treasury bond rate. And the 10-year treasury bond rate affects the 30-year fixed rate mortgage rate. That's my opinion. You don't believe it, go do your own research and figure it out on your own, but that's what my opinion is. Home prices are high. The cost of buying a home has gone up again. See, this is, this is, the, this is where people are just puzzled. They're saying to themselves, well, oh, God, dog, man, we're in a, you know, you, you got this resilient labor market you got this, 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 this economy that, that, that points to it's doing well. You got the labor market that's doing well. Despite the fact you got these high interest rates, you still got these, these, these homes that are still overpriced and they continue to go up in value. That's the thing that's puzzling people because typically the two don't go together. High interest rates and high home prices typically don't go together. But when you have an inventory problem, they do. Because you got to understand there are people out there who have prepared and who have built wealth who are still buying houses. But they're the minority. So there are people out there that are still buying houses, guys. They're just paying cash or they can afford to pay the 7.5% interest rate. The majority of us can't. Right. The majority of us can't. The cost of buying a home has gone up again and prices haven't come down. Killerman said. So the Fed keeps trying to tame inflation with rate increases. But at least one sector is untamable and it is housing. It's anxiety inducing, he said. Housing is a basic need and would be buyers who held out last year, are tired of waiting. See how people keep that pent up, that pent up demand. That's why I keep telling y'all guys, it might not be a bad time if you're positioned right to buy real estate because once that pent up demand is released through interest rate reductions, all of them people are gonna flood to the housing market that have been sitting on the sideline, waiting, waiting, waiting. They're gonna flood to the housing market. So it may not be a bad time if you're well healed and you're bankable, you got some cash, you, 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 you know, you got yourself in a financial position where you can do it. It may not be a bad deal to go out and negotiate you a good deal with a seller that already has fatigue, right? They have seller fatigue. They're ready to get rid of these properties. It may, but if you, hey, if you wait till rates come down, all of this pent up frustration from people wanting to buy, when them rates come down a couple percent, I tell you what, they get to 5%, people are going to flood back into the housing market to buy a house. 
And then guess what's going to happen to those prices? They go even higher because you're going to have a supply versus demand issue. They're going to go higher. So let's keep let's keep reading. It's anxiety inducing, he said. Housing is a basic need and would be buyers who held out last year are tired of waiting. Millennials who've delayed starting a family, putting off plans, can only wait so long, Killerman said. He's never seen anything like it, calling it the worst situation for the housing market. Housing is in a recession. I agree with him. I agree with him. I agree with him. And the rest of the economy is booming. Right? Booming jobs market. When you got the retail, uh, the retail uh, numbers for, for March, up. So people are still spending money, guys. People are still spending money hand over fist. So you got this, 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 this labor market that's booming. You got the economy, right, from a spending standpoint, not building wealth standpoint, but a spending standpoint is, is booming. People are still broke, but they're, they're spending their wages. They're not building wealth. They're not putting money in retirement. How do I know that? Because there's 150 million people that have no retirement. We probably only got about 300 million adults in this country. Half of them have no retirement because they take their wages and they're spending them. They're not taking the wages and saving them and putting them in investments. They take their wages and they spend them. So that's what he's talking about here. Housing markets in a recession, but the economy is booming. The overall economy. I was the CEO during the great financial crisis, he continued. Sales volume went down, but prices did too. See, that's the, that's the problem. Normally, that's how it happens. That's what happened in 2008. Remember 2008, the great financial crisis? See, see volume went down, right? Sales volume went down, but prices went down too. But you know, you got to understand, then you didn't have this booming labor market. And you had an oversupply of inventory. In this situation, you have an undersupply of inventory. Back in 2008, we had real estate everywhere. <laughs> you had single families, condos, you, you had unfinished projects. You had them everywhere because people were speculating. So you had an oversupply in 2008. Now you have an undersupply. So, Killerman said, usually when sales decline, prices drop too, and then sales increase later. That's the cycle, he said. Homes become affordable again. Sales pick up because of it. This situation is very different. Interest rates are up and sales volume has fallen through the floor. As he put it, but home prices haven't followed. Some of that is just this artifact of 30-year mortgages, he said. Everything in the Federal Reserve is doing has no real effect on homeowners apart from keeping them where they are. So he's saying the interest rate increases are not really helping the housing market because what it's doing is it's just forcing people to stay where they are. So people who would be Candidates to sell their homes aren't doing it. They're just not doing it because the rates are too high. I don't want to give up my three and a half rate for a seven and a half percent rate. No one wants to do that, right? Everything the Federal Reserve is doing has no real effect on homeowners apart from keeping them where they are. It actually has the preverse effect of keeping home prices high. So rates elevated, limited inventory, does what to prices? Keeps prices elevated. That's what it does. It keeps prices elevated. Why? Because you take the demand away from the market. See, high rates keep demand away. You need demand in order to force prices down. You need demand and you need what? Supply. You need demand and supply. You need demand for sales so people can make a living. You need supply to bring prices down. So I need demand because that drives transactions, right? 
We need demand, but that drives transactions. What should come first? He's saying what should come first is what? More supply, and then we can get prices down. Because if I got more supply than I have demand, prices come down. But that's not happening right now. He doesn't know that mortgage rates will go up significantly through the end of this year. They could even come down, depending on inflation. He thinks sales will improve and they've already been better than he's expected. That's because people need homes. It's not a fad to own a home. And there's a deep seated human need to own a home where you're going to raise your family, he said. Still, the problem goes beyond the latest spell of unaffordability and has more to do with building homes, more inventory. More inventory drives down prices. But nobody wants to build more inventory because there is no demand. So you're in a catch-22. Nobody wants to go on the limb and build a whole bunch of houses that nobody's there to buy them. So you catch-22, right? Catch-22. For the longest time, housing was getting very expensive, but money was getting cheaper. See, that goes back to the pandemic. Think about it now. Think about it. He's right. Think about it. After the pandemic or right in the pandemic, shortly after the pandemic, 2021, what happened? Interest rates were 2.5%, but you had prices skyrocketing. Prices were skyrocketing, but rates were dropping. Why was that happening, guys? Because that's what the Federal Reserve did. The Federal Reserve wanted to stimulate the economy. And they stimulate the economy through interest rates. Right? They can accelerate the economy. They can decelerate the economy using interest rates. So when we were coming out of the pandemic and they were fearful that the economy would collapse, what did they do? They took the Fed funds rate to zero. Now people can go out and borrow money at the prime rate, 3%. I can get a mortgage at 2.5%. I can get a mortgage at 35 You know what I'm saying? That stimulates the economy. That, that encourages people to go borrow money. That's what he's saying. So prices did what? When you stimulate the economy like that, guys, you throw a new money supply into the economy, that increases demand. When you increase demand and you do not have enough supply, it runs prices through the roof. And that's what happened in the pandemic real estate housing boom. When they introduced all that free money, that cheap money into the market, people grabbed it. And guess what? They did not have enough inventory. So that's what ran prices up on real estate homes 40 to 50 percent, some areas 100 percent in a two-year period because of that. That's what he's saying. Crazy, right? Californians became Texans and Floridians. But all the buffers are gone, he said. The people who are going to move already have and money isn't cheap anymore. The only way to solve this problem is by building homes. And basically he's just saying the only way to solve this problem is you gotta create more inventory. And you got to build the inventory because people with existing homes are not going to move. They're not going to leave their two and a three, three percent interest rate to get a seven. So you can forget that. You can forget existing homeowners. They're not going to do it. So the only way you get more inventory right now, you better build it. Problem is what national builder out there wants to go on the limb and build all this stuff and ain't got no buyers for it. Not many. Not many. So that's it, man. That, that's all we're going to cover on, the real est on, on real estate. So we covered banks, why banks are headed to a recession. We covered real estate, why real estate's in a, a, a recession, right? Both of those are in a recession, right? What about stocks and crypto? And then we're going we're gonna to close this thing out. Let's talk about, let's talk about stocks. Let's talk about crypto. Let's talk about why are we starting to see some sell-offs. Why are we starting to see sell-offs? Even though we got this booming economy, we got this great uh, jobs market, why are we starting to see stocks fall? 
while we starting to see the S&P 500 go down to 5,000 from 5,200? Why are we starting to see some of your great companies starting to fall off a little bit? Why are we starting to see your great ETFs starting to fall off? Why are we starting to see that? Here's the headline. Don't buy the dip in stocks just yet as a wave of selling is about to bring the market to the bottom, according to one of the biggest bulls on Wall Street. Now, again, guys, this ain't my opinion. I'm just telling you what someone else's opinion is. And then I'll tell you what my thoughts are and what I'm going to be doing in order to put myself in a position to capitalize either way. Y'all know how I roll. I'm going to get rich either way. Fall down 20, 30 percent. Good. I'm going to get rich. Go up 20 or 30 percent. Good. I'm going to get rich because I'm in the market 365 days a year. Nonstop. So either way, I get rich. Right. So let's read on. Don't buy the dip in stocks just yet, according to this, this Wall Street bull. They'll tell us who he is, I'm sure, at some point. Don't buy the dip in stocks just yet. There's a wave of selling that could see the market bottom out in the coming weeks, according to one Wall Street biggest bulls. Tom Lee, fund strats head of research and one of the most bullish stock forecasters this year issued a word of caution for investors looking for opportunities amid the market sell-off. Stocks have slumped after taking in a hot inflation report from March, escalating tensions in the Middle East. And guys, that does have a big deal to do with it too, the, what's going on in the Middle East. But, but that's above my pay grade. I'm not getting into that. So let's keep moving here. Stocks have slumped after taking in a hot inflation report for March, escalating tensions in the Middle East and hawkish guidance on Fed rate cuts, causing the S&P 500 to notch four straight days of losses. But optimistic investors shouldn't rush into stocks just yet. Lee said, pointing to a surge in the VIX, the market's volatility gauge. Higher volatility typically triggers selling among investors, he warned, which could lead to near-term pressure for stocks. While we normally like to buy the dip, as we said earlier this week, the surge in the VEX says we gotta take buying the dip extra slowly. Lee said in a video he sent to his clients on Thursday. A buying opportunity could come soon as the market looks poised to bottom. So he's thinking we ain't seen the worst yet. It's going to bottom even further. I can't disagree or agree with him on that one. My strategy is totally different, but I, I hear what he's saying. So let's continue and then I'll give you my thoughts on it. That's largely because the positive catalysts for stocks are still in play. Like strong corporate earnings growth, the S&P is on track to record the S&P is on track to report earnings growth of over 7% for the first quarter. And is a per estimates from FactSet. The Fed also looks poised to cut interest rates sometime this year, even if rate cuts could be delayed further than investors are expecting. Markets are now pricing in one or two rate cuts by December, according to the CME Fed Watch tool. Lee predicted markets could hit a tough, Lee predicted markets could hit a tranche within the next month or possibly sooner, assuming that Middle East conflict does not escalate further. Volatility eases and investors show signs that they're slowing their pace of selling. This pullback, I think, is very good because it's providing good entry points, Lee said. All the things that are supporting stocks are still in place. Lee predicted the S&P 500 could hit 5,200 by the end of the year. It shattered that. 
but has noted the index could notch 5,500 or higher in a best case scenario. He was spot on in his 23 stock forecast, correctly calling a 20% gain in the benchmark. So this guy right here is a heavyweight. I mean, he, he, he's a heavyweight, right? His company is a heavyweight. He's a Wall Street bull. That means he's, a, he's bullish on stocks, right? Um, here's my thought. You know, guys, I, I can't predict what's going to happen in the stock market, right? I'm not going to try to be a predictor. I'm, I'm not as smart as this guy. I, I've not been around as long as this guy in the stock market, so I can't. I mean, it looks like his track record is pretty good. I think what we're seeing right now, we are starting to see some slide back. I think you're seeing it in crypto. At one point, I believe yesterday, crypto went, uh, Bitcoin went under $60,000 a coin. So I, I think what you're, happen, you, you're seeing here is optimism from investors. And when I say investors, I'm talking about big boy investors. I'm talking about institutional investors, billion dollar hedge funds, billion dollar retail investors. I'm talking about all big boys. They're starting to lose patience. They're starting to say, you know something, we thought the Fed was going to be on this thing, reducing these rates by March, maybe June. Now it looks like these guys are pushing this thing back to December. Why in the hell will I take the risk of keeping my money in the market way till December when I can just take my profits right now and then I can re-enter the market in September? I can re-enter the market sometime later on this year and still catch the wave. That's the way the big boy investors think because it's short term. You and I, are we're long term. We're not short term. We, we don't have a team of people that sit around a computer all day and figure this stuff out. We don't have that. We don't have the resources this guy has. We don't have Harvard educated and, 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 and Ivy League educated and the smartest and the brightest and the best minds in the world when it comes to this kind of stuff working for us. We don't have that. We got an iPhone. We got a smartphone and the one trillion dollar research lab. That's it. And a couple guys on YouTube who don't know much more than you know, including me. Including me. So, so here's, here's, the, here's what we should be doing. In my opinion, you should be in the market 365 days a year. Buy the dip. That's the way I'm doing. I'm just buying the dip down. I'm not saying, okay, I got $10,000 invested. I'm putting a whole 10000 in today. No, I just take the $10,000 and I say, well, okay, over the next 20 days, over the next 20 trading days, I'm going to buy $500 a day. So if it keeps sliding, I'll buy $500 a day as it slides all the way down. The problem, what you don't want to do is sit on the sideline trying to be some big Wall Street whale and try and time it and you miss everything. That's all I'm saying. You, 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 me personally, I'm just buying the dip. I bought some this morning. I bought SPLG and I bought FTEC. Both of them are down, guys. Both of them are in the red. I don't care. I love buying them in the red because I know some point this year when that Fed reduced them rates, they're going back up. They're going back up, guys. They got to reduce these rates. I just told you what's going on with banks. I just told you what's going on in the real estate market. Do you believe the Fed has the luxury to just let both of these die? They don't. At some point, they got to reduce those rates and take the chance that inflation might go back up. They'll have to take that chance at some point this year. So here's the thing. Until they're ready to take that chance, I just keep buying so, so if the S&P keeps sliding, I keep sliding down with the S&P, buying the dip every day, sliding down. I'm not going to throw every penny I got on one day. Why would you do that? You shouldn't do that. You just buy the dip down. If I got a thousand bucks and I want to take 10 days and do a hundred dollars a day, every trading day for 10 days, I'm going to buy the dip. That's how I get my thousand dollars worked into the market. I don't take the thousand dollars and go one day. I just buy the dip. So, so all I'm telling you is, is this gentleman could be absolutely right. There could be more heavier red days coming. But a guy who's in the building stage of wealth, I welcome the red days. I love the red days because I can buy these assets at a discount. When the last time did you see Vanguard um, information technology VGT trading under $500 a share? It's been a minute. I looked at it this morning. It was down in like the 490 range. And 
declining. And that's one of the great, that's one of the great ETFs in the world right there, man. I bought it for many years. When the last time you saw that? See, this is what I'm telling you guys. We, we, we got to understand how this, the cycles in the market works. We're not big boy investors. We are regular folk out here taking a $100, $200, $500, $1,000, $5,000 and trying to build us some wealth on a monthly basis. That's who we are. So we don't have the luxury to try to time this thing like this guy. He knows what he's doing. He has the resources. He's been here before. We don't have the resources. So I don't want to try to time it. I'm just going to get in. Every day I think it's lower, I'm buying. And I'll buy the dip down. I'll buy the dip. I'll, 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 buy the, I'll buy the bounce. When it starts bouncing, I'll buy the bounce. Right? I'm going to just stay in the market 365 days a year, knowing that if I can do that and do it consistently for 10 years, the, the market has told me, the stock market history has told me, I get a 7 to 10% return if I do that consistently over 10 years. And I invest in something like the S&P 500. That's it, man. That, that's all I got to tell you on that. For you guys who, who, who um, are on the fence with this thing, I, I would tell you, figure out what you're trying to get accomplished. What are your long-term financial goals that you're trying to get accomplished? And can you use the stock market to help you do that? That's what I would tell you. Each one of us got to figure out that. We got to figure out, can we use the stock market? Can we look at the history of the stock market and, 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 and see how that can help us multiply our money? I, I, was, I, got an email, I got an email from a lady today. Not an email. She sent me an instant message on Instagram. And she was like, you know, Richard, I'm 69. My husband is 70. We own our house free and clear. We own our cars free and clear. We don't got no consumer debt. We're living on $3,300 a month. And we decided to take $200,000, our nest egg, out of the bank. And I guess they hid it somewhere. I don't know, safe, somewhere like that. Do you think we did the right thing? Do you think we did the right thing? And, you know, I simply said to her, I said, you know something? <laughs> you know, hey, he, he, I, I can see I, I can't tell you what you did was wrong. But what I can tell you is, is what I would do. That's all I can tell you. I, 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 I don't know your whole life history. So all I can tell you is, is given the information you've provided me with. Here's what I would be thinking about. See, I would be thinking about goodness gracious. Inflation is three percent. I've taken my nest egg. I'm getting 0% on it. I get it. I'm scared and I'm trying to protect my little nest egg, but I'm getting 0% on my nest egg. The goods and services of my everything that I'm paying for over the last several years have went up by 18%. But I got my money, not even in a money market, getting 3%. Not even in a CD getting 3 or 4 or 5% in a CD. Nothing. Not in the market. Nothing. It's buried somewhere in a safe somewhere, wherever they hid it at. It's, it's earning nothing. But everything that I'm paying for with that $3,300 a month is going up. So guess what's going to happen to that $3,300? What you were able to buy in 2023 with that $3,300 a month, you're not going to be able to buy those same things in 24 with that. Your purchasing power is going down. Every day you keep your money buried or in your safe or wherever the hell y'all keep it, it's losing purchasing power. So at 69, 70 years old, you got to make that decision what's more important to you. I can't make that decision for you, but I know if it was me, I would at minimum have my money in an FDIC insured bank at least in a money market or at least in a CD and I'm covered because FDIC insurance will cover me up to $250,000 if my bank collapsed. At minimum, I do that. See, here's the thing, guys. If we're that afraid of America collapsing 
your two hundred thousand dollars in 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 dollars are gonna be no good. If the U.S. dollar is no good, your money's no good. So taking it out of the bank and and tucking it somewhere, trying to avoid a catastrophic event is meaningless. Because if if, if the U.S. dollar goes to zero, it is worth nothing. Your two hundred thousand dollars is gonna be worth nothing. That's all I'm saying. So each one of y'all can figure out your own scenario and what you would do in your, with your scenario. Some bright points is they own the house free and clear. They got no consumer debt. That's good things. Because at that age, it would have been even worse if they wouldn't have been debt free. So at least they're debt free. $3,300 a month, guys, is, is a toughie. Now, I don't know what part of the country they live in, but I can tell you right now, I'm 56. So I ain't, I ain't, you know, I'm 10 years younger than the wife. I'm, fit, well, she's 69, so it's 13 years. I'm 13 years younger than the wife. And I can tell you right now, $3,300 ain't gonna make it. Not for me, it would. Not where I'm at in my life. It, it, t take the house away. I don't, own any, I don't owe any money on the cars. The only thing I owe anything is the house. You, you, take, the, you take the house away, I still couldn't live on $3,300 a month. I, I don't get no debt other than the house. I have no debt other than the house. So how they living on $3,300 a month? Hey, that's, that's, I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't do it. I, I'm telling you, just food, insurance, property taxes. I mean, just the basic stuff. I'm not, I'm not talking about flying around on private jets all around the world. I'm not talking about going out buying luxury items every month. No, I'm talking about my basics, man. I'm talking about real estate taxes. I'm talking about a, 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 a homeowner's insurance policy. I'm talking about health insurance premiums. I'm talking about car insurance premiums. You own the car free and clear, but you still got to pay for insurance. I'm talking about utilities. I'm talking about food So all I'm telling you guys, this building wealth thing is, is important. Now, like I said, I don't know their whole makeup, so I can't. But based on what she's been writing me, because she's written me again a couple more times saying, hey, I, may, I, may, I got these licenses. I may want to go back to work. She's 69. He's 70. She's talking about going back to work, guys. I'm telling you. This is real out here. Oh, golly, you, you, you don't do enough positive pieces. What's positive? Sitting up here lying to you? Is that positive? You want me to just sit up here and, oh, oh guys, you're wonderful. Oh, what a great day. Oh, goodness gracious. Listen, guys, I'm a positive person. I look at these videos as just the truth. I do. I just look at it as preparing you for what's really out there. I just gave you a scenario of people that, in all intents and purposes, have done a good job. I mean, the home's free and clear. The cars are free and clear. No consumer debt. So for all intents and purposes, these people took care of business. But they're living on $3,300 per month. And I got to believe a good little piece of that is Social Security. Probably a good little piece of that is Social Security. So even people that have paid off all the debt, own the house free and clear, they live it on $3,300 a month. What is that, $40,000 a year? So all I'm telling you guys is it's a real world out here, and I hope you, you don't misunderstand. My job here, I'm sorry, my job here is to provide information to you that could potentially help you get yourself in a place where you ain't got to worry about going to work at 69. Where you ain't got to worry about going to work at 70. Where you can just enjoy yourself and, 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 and enjoy life and not have to worry about that. But you got to prepare for it. You have to prepare for it. And my job here is to help you do that. It's not here to... to, to to, to, to make you feel better. That's your job.
It's not my job to make you feel better. Just like it's not your job to make me feel better. That's my job. My job is to make me feel better, to make me happy, to make me positive. That's my job. Not yours and vice versa, right? So all I'm saying is, is get yourself in order. We have went through some information here that, that shows you kind of what's happening. Yes, do we have an economy technically that's doing well? We do. Yes, do we have a jobs market that's doing well technically? We do. But what you got to ask yourself is, with these interest rates as high as they are, how long do you think that will last? I've given you two things in our economy that is breaking right now. These things are breaking. What else is going to break? These interest rates ain't no joke, man. And the Fed know that. That's the reason they're keeping them higher for longer because they know at some point these rates will catch up. These rates are going to catch up with the economy at some point, and the Fed knows that. That's why they keep them higher for longer. They know at some point they catch up. Guys, do me a big favor. Get down to that description box. Click on that Moomoo link if you want 10 fractional shares of the Magnificent Seven. If you want those 10 fractional shares of the Magnificent Seven, click on the Moomoo link. Open up your Moomoo account today. Put $100 in there. They're going to give you 10 fractional shares of the Magnificent Seven. Tesla. Microsoft, Meta, Amazon, Alphabet, AKA Google, NVIDIA, and Tesla. Those are your seven magnificent seven companies. If you're interested in that, you wanna take advantage of that free money offer, that free stock offer, click on that link down in the description box, open up that Moomoo account today, go get that free stock, go get that free money. Guys, also do me a big favor, second link down in the description box is my new website, Richard Fame Millionaire Mentor website. Take a look at the website. Also take a look at the digital products that we've handpicked for you guys to help you build wealth and get to your pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Pick you a few of them up. The biggest investment you can make, guys, is in yourself. The biggest investment you can make is in yourself to get you to your pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Don't be cheap on yourself. Invest in your education. Invest in your knowledge. But... But do not let that trump your execution. Investing in yourself and reading a lot of stuff and not doing nothing with it is meaningless. Those products are there for you to go ahead and invest in yourself, but use the information to build wealth. That's how you get the payoff. See, it's like running your own business. I got to invest in stuff and then I take that stuff I invested in and I create revenue with it. That's how businesses work. I buy stuff for my business. I use that stuff that I bought for my business to generate income. Same thing in your business, which is your financial wealth business. You buy products so you can gather more information, but then you take that information and you generate what? Wealth with it. That's what the website is there for. Take a look at the digital products, grab your one or two, and start building some wealth. Along with that Moomoo link, Click on that, open the Moomoo account, get your 10 fractional shares of the Magnificent Seven, and then build a game plan to start dollar cost averaging into the Magnificent Seven every single month through fractional share trading, right? So, so I don't have to have $850 to buy NVIDIA. I can buy a fractional share with it with as little as $5. With as little as $5, I can buy a fractional share of NVIDIA. I can buy a fractional share of Apple. I can buy a fractional share of Microsoft. The world's most valuable company is Microsoft. You mean to tell me I can become an owner of Microsoft with as little as five bucks? Yes, you can, through fractional share trading on the Moomoo app. So go down in the description box and click on that. Get that free money, get that free stock. Click on the website. And the last thing I'm gonna ask you about the website is there is a Richard Fane Millionaire Mentor Membership Club. Many, 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 many of you have already taken advantage of that once you went to the website. I would encourage you guys, if you want extra time with me, we're going to be doing 90 minute live streams in the membership club, but they're going to be deep dive. They're not going to be these types of videos that we do 
on the on on here where I talk about a lot of you know what's going on in the economy and I do a lot of you know, I, I look at a lot of uh, articles and I kind of walk you through the article and I give you my input on it. I love doing that on YouTube, but those are not the type of live streams we're going to do on the Millionaire Mentor uh, Membership Club. We're going to do more hands-on examples of real estate projects. How do you buy real estate? How do you find tenants? Right? We're going to do that kind of stuff. We're going to do, okay, Richard, uh, here, here's my portfolio, guys. Here's how I broke it down. Here's how I, I invest, right? So we'll have that on there. We're gonna also have side hustles, but, but not me just telling you about the side hustle, actually showing you the websites. Here's where you go. Okay, guys, this is what I did in luxury watch sales. Here are the websites I went to. Here's the watch forums I belong to. Here are the watches that I sold. This is how I broke it down when I sold them. Here's the description. That's the kind of stuff we're gonna be doing in the membership club. So there will be more in-depth and it'll be feedback from you guys. And every week, based on your feedback to me, that's what we'll cover in the, in the, in the, in the, in the 90-minute live stream. And I've been getting people already emailing me through the membership club about things they want to discuss. Hey, I want you to bring on a CPA and let's talk about how businesses can take advantage of some of the, you know, the strategies that they can use in order to reduce my tax liability, you know, that kind of stuff. So we'll be having those kind of people on there as well. So I think it's, listen guys, again, it's not an investment in me. Please don't look at it that way. Please look at it as an, it's an investment in your education so you can build wealth. Many of you email me, oh Richard, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to do that. Guess what? Join the membership club. That's all. Join the membership club, send me an email and say, okay Richard, in one of your upcoming live streams on the membership club, I'm one of your club members and I need you to cover this. And I'm going to say, no problem. We'll cover it. Because see, you got to understand, guys, we're going to have 700,000 people in there. We're not going to have, a, we're going to have 100, 150, 200, 300 people. That's it. So it's easy for me to be able, I can't do that on a YouTube channel because, it, 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 you know, it's just too many people. I, I would be here, if, I, I would never, I, I just have to get my own schedule, my own information on the YouTube channel because I can't, it's too many people. So remember that in the membership club. Thank you guys for rocking with me. I appreciate you. Hit that thumbs up button before you get out of here. I appreciate y'all. Um, long week, man. We've had a lot of stuff we've covered. I hope you understand my job here is to provide you with information that I think would be helpful for you to build wealth. And I hope that's the way you take it. Right. I, I, I just I got to be honest with you. I'm not here to, to sugarcoat things. I'm not here to, um, you know, we have fun and we'll joke and yeah, a little bit every now and then. But really, I'm serious about this. I'm serious about providing you information that's beneficial to you. There's a lot of other entertainment channels, guys. You're not going to turn my channel into an entertainment channel. It's not going to happen. So you know, if you're disappointed and oh, golly, I wish you <laughs> Find another channel. There are many other financial channels out there that guys that don't touch this kind of stuff I touch. All they do is, hey, hey, here's a side hustle. Here's a medical billing. You can make a million dollars a month. That's fine. If that's what you're looking for, no accountability. It doesn't force you to do nothing on your own. You want somebody to babysit you. You want somebody to hold your hand. Find another channel. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. Nobody held my hand. I don't hold hands. I don't sugarcoat it. I'm just going to tell you the truth. It ain't doomsday, it's the truth. It's preparing you for what's really out here, especially for you young folks. It's preparing you for what's really out here. Just like I tell my daughter, guys, <laughs> you know, <laughs> listen, I tell my little 16 year old, <laughs> it's a real world out there. Honey, please be a kid. Please just be a kid because it's a real, real world out here. And these people in this real world, they don't care nothing about you. Just be a kid. Develop yourself. Be a kid. Because I'm telling you, this real thing out here, your pop's been in it for 56 years. Since I was 13 years old, I've been out here in this real world grinding. 13 years old. And I'm 56. I've been out here grinding. Making it happen. Making mistakes. Picking myself back up. Asking God to forgive me. I've been doing it. It's a real world out here. The only way I've carved out my world, my piece of this world, is I had to work for it. Nobody gave me nothing. 
See, I took my peace. I've created my world and I protect my world because I paid the price. I've created my world. And the only way I was able to create my world is through assets that generate income to take care of me. If I didn't have these assets, I'd be in somebody else's world working right now at 56 years old, putting in 40, 50, 60 hours a week. That's what I'd be doing right now. But see, I created my own world through assets. And that's what I'm trying to get you guys to understand. Create your own world through assets. But you got to pay the price up front to get the assets. Appreciate you, man. Lock it in with a thumbs up. Have a good Friday. I'll be back here tomorrow morning with another live stream, 10.30 a.m. Eastern time. We will be going over some other stuff. We won't be doing stories, but we will be doing some other stuff on the channel like we normally do on Saturdays. So if you want to rock with that, rock with it. I appreciate you. You know I do. Whether I have one person or a thousand people in here, y'all know I'm going to be back. This is what I do. This is what I'm passionate about. This is what my purpose in life is. This is why I grind for 25 years so I could put myself in a financial position to do what I love doing, and that's helping people. But I'm going to help them in the way I know how to help them, which is just telling them the truth. That's, how, that's the only way I can help, guys. I have to be honest and tell you the truth according to my opinion. You do not have to agree with everything I say. Right? So thank you very much. Lock it in for, with a thumbs up before you get out of here. Again, get that Moomoo link, second link in the description box. Um, first link in the description box for the Moomoo link, the 10 fractional shares of the Magnificent Seven. And then the second link, go check out the website, pick up some digital products, join the membership club. It's going to be fantastic. Thoughts become things. You can see it in your mind. You can hold it in your hands. You guys keep chasing your greatness. Never stop believing in yourself. Stay healthy. Get wealthy. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.